some other shit. Like where I come from, English is like the third or fourth spoken language in South Florida, but the dog's barking is the universal language of love. Like everybody knows that shit that, that Fluffy's there to handle business, but you want to be able to squeeze that and cap that when you want. There's a lot of byproducts as, up to why the dog got there, right? Barking and prey and being rewarded and prey barking is a big component of that. We're going to talk about that during drive channeling. But the hope and anticipation of going down range and handling shit is, is where the, the dog just can't have that impulse control to shut his mouth. So what we have to do is create a system where the dog is going to engage in that unwanted behavior, have tools and techniques and, and a reward system available to make the dog understand that's not in your advantage. So what I normally do is, is to stop that reactivity or stop that kind of leaking is that we have to have the dominant slip lead on the dog. And the beauty of this device is that it just re restricts blood and oxygen to the brain. When you're using a prong and an E to correct any type of leaking or aggression, it can enhance an aggression. Like from the time the baby puppies are four or five weeks old in the whelping box, they're doing puppy MMA. They're grabbing each other, they're wrestling, they're biting, one submits, one is the aggressor, one's the dominant one, one submissive. They just play these roles back and forth. The dog understands teeth on skin can mean aggression. Of course, the day comes where mama's done with their shit, their teeth are like needles, her milk's drying up, and she fucking nails them. Of course, they submit to mama at that point in time, but as they mature, they realize teeth on skin could be go time. The, the pinching sensation of a prong collar, because it's designed to mimic nature, is teeth on skin, can make aggression worse because they may fight back. It, the needling sensation of an e-collar can also mirror that as well. So we have to have a device that, that really makes them understand that vocalization is no good. So this is basically like Xanax, right? <laughs> giving e-collar uh, giving e -collar and prong to a dog who's loaded and has like full of drive and anxiety is like giving them cocaine, right? So we need to give them the Xanax, right? Also, mechanically, I use a lot of human analogies to help people grab shit. So if we're sitting here having a conversation and somebody walks up behind me and wraps me up in a rear naked choke, I'm done talking. I'm also bracing for that contraction because blood and oxygen is getting restricted to my brain. So it not only is a sedative, but mechanically it shuts the dog's mouth. But in order for this to be effective, you need two people to do it. Because some of these dogs are monsters. You start pulling up, they're coming up with you. And just whether the dog's never bitten you before or just in the moment they have that redirected aggression because they can't go forward, your energy is bringing them up towards you. Teeth go on skin, right? Even if it's momentarily, I don't give a fuck how tough you are. <laughs> whether you drop the leash to go fight him or you curl up in a ball in the fetal position and hope that Hefe comes to save you, pressure stops when teeth go on skin. And the dogs are hardwired to clearly understand how to shut off pressure. There's no dog trainer on earth that, this, that told the dog how to do that. God created that in the animal. So if he learns teeth go on skin, that's their go-to and it's a fucking problem, right? So the way that this has to be set up is that you need two people, right? So your dog heals on the left, right? I want the dog on your right side. Because it, I'm assuming that the relationship's good, you've invested a lot of repetition history and some dynamic functional healing. I don't want to cause pressure next to you here. I want that to be the holy ground. The harmony, sanctuary, big paychecks happen here. So we're going to put them on your right side where there's virgin territory. Do, do you heal on the right too? Some of my handlers, I do like flashy shit on the left and my flat walk on the right. Like there's times you may have to park and walk, you know, 200 yards through a crime scene or whatever. I don't want the get dog dragging you all over or showing that healing, put them on that flat walk. So anyway, if this virgin territory, you'll be on, the dog will be on your right and the second handler will be on the dominant on the dog's other side. So the dog is between us, right? So imagine this is the dog. You are on, you can stay on your pinch. Obviously it's secured to a backup device because pinches explode. And then I'll be on the dominant here, right? So what we have to do is set up an environment where we can reward the dog for his silence. We're going to use aversive control to stop the bullshit, to stop the leaking. But when he's calm and, and collected and capped, we want to pay the animal, but not with a send into the building. Because that's where the big dopamine spike is coming from, the hope and anticipation of going in there and wrecking shit. So I like to do room service, which means I'm going to bring the decoy to the dog. right? So what happens is... We install the leak, just the, the environment, bro, the approach of a door, the dog's there. So what has to happen in order to have the animal held accountable for their own bullshit is that we should not speak. And our body language has to be like hippie zen shit, bro. Like if the dog is here and this is his ears and his nose, like we're facing downrange, right? We have very calm, collected posture. He leaks, but what I do is you're my anchor. So I'm on that side of the dog. 
I use the dominant slip lead, my hands are low, and I'm restricting blood and oxygen sideways, right? I'm gonna have twice the leverage because I'm activating this device against yours, so I don't have to sit here and yank and crank. Some of these dogs are mutants, like I've had my hand, I, some dogs I really gotta lean on, but ideally I wanna look forward, chin up, shoulder squared, down range, boom. The reason being, this is intrusive. That is my fault. Because the way dogs read body language, the dog doing this, creating a little panic of blood and oxygen going bye-bye, that's your fault. And blood and oxygen to a predator's brain is a high-valued commodity. They want to keep that shit in their soul, right? They're hardwired for this. Some dogs, it's fingertips, man. Whew, boom. Simultaneously, I'm actually pulling him out of pack, right? I'm making him leave you, which the str very strong dogs can send them for a little bit of an OODA loop, right? So now the dog's been restricted. Whoop. But it, the big part of the system is that, let's say that we're searching this building. I'm gonna have a decoy right where this door is, right? I don't want the dog penetrating the threshold. He's gonna be right around the corner. And the decoy's got an e-collar in their hand. If they touch the contact points, that's their fault, right? Because with the e-collar, I'm gonna use the vibration of the e-collar as a marker and a signal for the decoy to come out into the hallway and pay the dog in position, right? And the reason I want that is because I wanna go, hey, come out, and the dog's gonna go, huh? lose focus. I want the dog, I want to be able to pay the dog very quickly. We create that, that capping of the leak, give him his blood and oxygen back. We see a moment of stability, hit the vibration, decoy comes out, room service. So now it's a double whammy. The dog realizes that, hey, I can keep my blood and air and also summon this decoy into my world and do what I want to do. They're always going to go. Don't ever, ever worry about the ability that they're going to be waiting at the threshold for fucking, you know, cookies and shit at, <laughs> for room service. That's a very effective system to stop that shit, right? Now, yes, you for sure can't have this on the road. You would maybe cut it down to a little, a tab that you can grab. But we also have to do, it sounds a little contradictory, is then once we, uh, the dog understands the system of losing blood and air, then we go back and pair it to electronics. So as the dog's getting blood and oxygen restriction, we'll do a simultaneous pairing with electronics. It can be simultaneous, boop, together, or E can start first, Pressure, release, E stops. And then in that moment, because the dogs learn that context, because they learn so clearly in context and pictures, this simultaneous pairing with electronics, the dog will go, when it's just E, he believes he's losing blood and air. In that picture, in that context. So we rinse and repeat in a lot of different pictures. Another way to desensitize that whole situation is if the radio's quiet, and once you get this, this stuff in play, once the radio's quiet, I'll go to a plaza that's, that's closed, Go, to, your, go to, a, to the front of the door, make some bullshit announcements, walk away. A lot. To kind of counter condition that big event, right? To kind of descent, you're never gonna desensitize it. That's deeply myelinated in the animal that there's so much hope to go downrange. But if you can flip the script of that reward history to get back to some kind of balance, like you'll receive, you'll achieve capping very, very well. Like a